We have so many different stories between our players on why we can't make final or why we can't win, but new story starts with us winning. And Echo Fox are going to play off. Recently, we've started living up to our old reputation that TSM is a team to be feared. I think all the teams that we're playing against know that we can show up at any given day. You think TSM, you think Bjergsen, and now his visage is burned into the mind of every fan out there. This playoffs is a pretty big deal for me because last time I was in playoffs was 2017 spring. This year at playoffs, I want to perform a lot better. Wild Turtle got a solo kill on a Cody side. In my career, I just won once, and I did a lot of time second place. This is one more chance to be champion, so I want to win. We started from the bottom and we had a really rough road ahead of us. And then we managed to, you know, prove everyone wrong. They'll take the Nexus, they'll take the bye, and they are taking the NALCS by storm. What a season from Team Liquid. The Spring Split champions locking in first place here. In playoffs, like, I just want to get back to the form where, like, it's impossible to kill me. You know your balling's gonna lose against me no matter what. That kind of fear, I know that teams always have it when they play against me, so I'm gonna get that again. I think I want people to remember that anytime that I'm playing in LCS, I'm gonna win. Welcome back to the NALCS Countdown. We're about nine minutes away from game one of the quarterfinals, and this postseason promises some incredible clashes starting with today's matchups. But to whet your appetite for things to come, we got an early copy of the playoff script, mm -hmm. and we, we wanted to notes. share some of our favorite twists to come, so I'll go first. First up, uh, Smoothie. He locks in, or rather looks to cash in, on his personal brand, retiring from pro professional league play, in favor of starting his own line of healthcare drinks. Uncle Smoothie's old-timey holistic health elixirs. Yeah. I feel like it's probably a saturated market. I I could swear I have a boosted smoothie in my fridge at home. Yeah, mm. that's that's the trick with these. Is see how much of these are actually photoshopped. Because yeah. the boosted smoothie... No, that's real. That's, that's actually that part on, real. No, no this right. is the script. What are you talking about? Yeah, Mark, oh, you're up. Hit us with the next one. All right, so the one that I actually liked when I saw it, I have... I, like I said, oh, you I have your own script. script. Gotcha. Okay. Aframu, uh, he serves DeMonte a cease and desist order after, star after he starts wearing sleeves on stage and in an effort to find his own unique look, DeMonte, in response, begins wearing a gunner monocle on yeah. stage. I didn't know they made monocles. Play. I think they used the whole, like, Rick Fox, Jared Jeffries connection to get the monocle gunner. Right. I also Are feel you... like it's kind of going to defeat the... It's going to trick well, the brain. I was going to say. There's no depth... Per, like, you don't need depth perception. It's a flat screen, right? So it doesn't matter if you're yeah, playing maybe that's half why the screen and some Tinder. weird yellowy uh, color. I got my favorite one. Uh, Big and Quan, the big robbery, they finally bury their long-standing rivalry, and they connect over their mutual love of Boba and their shared hatred of Mark Z. Reasoning is the mm. enemy of my enemy is my friend. I mean, that's logical. Yeah. Mm. And also, Mark is awful. So right, I, I align with that. Mm. I think I'm going to be friends with those two as well. Hey, at least out. I'm in the script this year. I didn't heard anything about you guys just yet. That's a good point. We are still here, though. All right. True, but I don't see anything about you guys in these pages. All right, well, keep flipping along. Maybe yeah, you will, my friend. Yeah, because the only thing I see is after the implementation of the two stages or two coaches on stage, it is revealed that both of TSM's stage coaches are actually Reggie in disguise. Yeah, this one made a lot of sense to me, actually. I I'm surprised going... we didn't catch on to it earlier. Yeah, the TSM subreddit says, when's Reggie going to come back? Right, he's been here the whole in. time, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. And now I'm starting to be curious whether or not he's sitting in any of those player yeah. chairs. I'm really just impressed that he they... solved cloning. Yeah, I was going to say, now that they've solved yeah. cloning, like, what is the limit? And we exposed them. Yeah. There's Ooh. probably some, like, There's sixth some more day violations on going on with that. <laughs> just uh, next one, effect. with his time off, Deathly actually aims to improve his Heimerdinger prowess by literally learning to build 
fully functioning combat turrets. I like how he's spending his off time. You got it. You said it yourself, Jad. It's a long off season, so at least he's investing it into something semi-productive. I'm sure Heisendong was also the one who taught him. Probably. Oh, without a doubt, he probably is yeah. the one who, who who built the schematics, the and it's really yeah. it's more deftly, you know, kind of also doing someone doing the mechanics of the building. Someone turned Matt into a scarecrow. Yeah. It's. He's a little concerning. You think he's got airy or after? You need a lame airy. Oh, Sadly, airy most likely. All right, well, we're really excited about what this postseason is cooking up. Our compliments to the mystery writer for the summer split. Who is doing that? Who is that? It's Comic Sans, too. 353. Oh, oh he and caught on to us. I'm going to go talk to that guy. Yeah, later. in about five minutes, I'm heading back there to figure out who it is. Now, as we turn to the match in not too long, players from both teams think a multitude of outside forces are at play for today's matchup. I definitely think the playoff TSM will show up. Not the clutch playoffs TSM, the previous year's TSM. Uh, I do think that every team right now fears us. Even if we did lose a game, we have won five out of six games that we played recently, and I don't think any team wants to face us in quarters. I mean, there's a ton of curses on our team right now. We've got the Phoenix curse going around. We've got the Alltech curse, Adrian curse, Huni curse semifinals. We've got the, the rookies curse, period. We've got... Um, well, normally it was it was IMTC9 curse, but now we have Smoothie and Huni on the same team, so I'm not sure how that those curses interact anymore. But and we have so many so many things are what's it called we have so many different like stories between our players on why we can't make final or why we can't win. But I mean, new story starts with us winning, so that's just how it's got to happen. All right, TSM feeling good. Dardock looking to defeat some uh, looming storylines in their history. But turning towards the first matchup of the 2018 Summer Playoffs, we've got Medios joining us to help us break down how these two teams might go at it today. And they have shown night and day performances between these two squads. Echo Fox and TSM, they can run the gamut of looking like one of the best teams in the league all the way down to the most hopeless. And the difference can sometimes be very subtle. So help me break it down. Yeah, so Echo Fox, they look like they're either going to smash you or explode. And the reasons that that happens can sometimes be hard to differentiate between the two. And it often comes down to the play of Huni and Dardoch. The way that I would describe these two teams is Echo Fox is pretty alpha in that they're very <laughs> aggressive, but sometimes way too aggressive, and they end up just exploding. And TSM's kind of beta. When they're not playing well, they're just too passive. No one really wants to be the person making the mistake that lost them the game. They just sort of roll over and let the other team win. So I think both these teams are going to find a balance. Yeah, and even though people look at Huni and Dardock as this huge strong point of Echo Fox, they can also be kind of their greatest weakness. Huni has 30 isolated deaths in 20 games. Oof. Like, he's averaging one and a half a game, which is just way more than everybody else uh, in the league. Right, I mean, you're talking about their best two players also being in the top five for deaths in the league yeah, overall. Total deaths, so yeah. it's just one of those things where, like, these are complete boomer bust kind of situations, and it's because they sometimes lack the discerning eye in the fight that they're about to take. Right, well, you know, on one hand, you could look at it as Huni's getting caught, but on the other perspective, he's the only one on his team grouped, and the rest of them are splitting together. Oh, there you go. That's what it <laughs> that's is. That's why that's we got you here, dude. Yeah, like, but I so, never would have taken that perspective. Tier. Exactly. So, so, so help, help me out, though. Help me actually differentiate and delineate the difference between Echo Fox and Echo Foe. So here are a couple things that we want you guys to specifically look out for when deciding if it's the good Echo yep. Fox or the Echo Foe. First off, Huni doesn't die five times. In their wins, only that's two a good point, start. Only 2.4 deaths a game. So if he's starting to feed, that's probably yeah. pretty bad. You're just trying to get all the check marks. Dardock has a 15 CS lead of 15. DeMonte's on Cinder, Lost is on Varus. There's a mo majority of the wins are on those two champions. Yep. However, Echo Foe is if he dies greater than five times, more than two isolated deaths. If Dardock doesn't get six before the enemy jungle, if DeMonte tries one of those new picks like the Zillion the or the Akali, and if Lost isn't on Varus, <laughs> oh, man. that one's a little that's simpler. A, that's a little narrow. It's kind of shown to Very be Very narrowing so far. conditions there. All right, on the side of uh, TSM, now uh, top form isn't quite you know necessarily determined as of yet, but help me break it down, Mark Z. I think everyone wants to believe top TSM form is like the 14-0, 14-1 Akali performance. And sure, it is top. It is the top, top form, but <laughs> yeah. that's not really what you're aiming for all the time. You're actually like the TSM that's building smaller laning leads through superior individual performances and playing matchups very well, and then transitioning those into moving around and grabbing turrets and objectives. 
Yeah, and I just feel like uh, when they're doing that, they're good, but they've been so beta for so much of the year, just getting pushed in across the map, not roaming, not seeming like they're able to do anything. And the difference can sometimes just be how well they're performing. We're putting some words to it. Let's give you a checklist as well. TSM versus free SM. How do we know? All right. Oh. Starting out, Bjergsen has to get control of the lane and actually get on the map. When he doesn't get that opportunity, it feels really bad for TSM when he's stuck in his lane for the first 15 minutes of the game. Also, Hauntzer uh, pressures and oftentimes can get caught out for, so as long as he is able to dodge those ganks, that's really important. Grig controlling the Drakes with the pressure that his team is getting versus being down in CS and hasn't been able to do anything while all of his lanes get pushed in. And that kind of is the final one, of course, the bot lane. Usually looking to go even or ahead. Uh, they're not like quite the super lane dominant stompers that you're yeah. looking for, but they definitely cannot handle just getting pushed in under their turret. You've seen it sometimes when they're playing the Ezreal Braum and things go bad. Yeah, check those out on Twitter. Follow along at home. Definitely. Who who's wins. If you're yeah, a PSM exactly. fan, you don't want to see free SM. Easy peasy. We're narrowing in on game time. We're going to do some rapid fire predictions for the best of five, the first best of five of the summer split. So down the line, Mark, starting with you. Who takes it and in how many games? TSM 3-1. 3-1, TSM. All right, Medios. I have TSM 3-2. 3-2, so we're going the full five if Medios wow. is correct. And Jat, what are you thinking here? I have TSM 3-1, which is making this going to seem super one-sided. We're all about to look Echo real Fox dumb. could have had a chance. I do also want to point out that Huni has has the flu and has had it for the last few games. The Echo Fox team themselves have been trying to hype him up, calling it the flu game, referring mm -hmm. to Michael Jordan's game in 1997, which you can look up, where he played in game five of the NBA Finals, scored 38 points, and they won. Take a look. As an NBA organization with Rick Fox, they're trying to motivate him that way, right. but it's going to be tough. Well, and you got you to motivate to get over the hurdle. But with that, the stage is set, so we're going to toss it out to the Battle Arena to get the games underway. Thank you, Dash. Boy, oh boy, am I excited. For some playoff action here, Azale. I am very excited, and I feel like the guys on the desk forgot the Echo Fox is 3-0 over TSM this season. Yeah, that's something that when people ask me who do you think is going to win, I'm like, what? Playoffs begin this weekend with four teams fighting for a trip to the Oracle Arena. Find out the third team, third team rather, booking their flight to Oakland with our series today, which could promise some explosive brawls between Echo Fox and TSM. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the NALCS Countdown, where for 30 minutes we say goodbye to the teams who fell short and spoil the playoff script until the timer reaches zero and we jump into champion select. Gentlemen, we have made it to the postseason in one of the most chaotic splits the North American LCS has ever seen. I didn't think we were going to get here. I thought, right? I was worried the wheels, it was wheels were going to fall off the eternal, bus. <laughs> week seven. Eternal tiebreakers is what I thought we were going to Stop it dead. Yeah. Call it here. And what's also interesting is there's only one team different in the playoffs uh, from spring to summer. So it's all back to normal, Dad. Uh, yeah, the more things change, the more they stay the same, ladies and gentlemen. To kick off the postseason, let's take a look at the playoff bracket presented by Jersey Mike Subs. TSM and Echo Fox, they clash today in the first quarterfinal match fall by 100 Thieves versus FlyQuest on the other side of the bracket. After we have the winners of those matches, a representative from Team Liquid, the number one seed, will choose their semifinal opponent, leaving the remaining semifinalists to face Cloud9. Now, Jersey Mike's summer final sweepstakes comes to a close this weekend, so if you're looking to win that all-expenses-paid trip to the Oracle Arena, use the promo code JMNALCS at jerseymikes.com before the end of the day Sunday for your chance at a free trip to Oakland. Now, if you don't manage to win that sweepstakes, hit up lollysports.com slash tickets for your set so we can catch you in Oakland as we crown the 2018 summer champions. With the conclusion of the regular season, it's time to say a fond farewell to three teams we won't be seeing until 2019 as we welcome back RIP. Of, of those matches, a representative from Team Liquid, the number one seed, will choose their semifinal opponent, leaving the remaining semifinalists to face Cloud9. Now, Jersey Mike's summer final sweepstakes comes to a close this weekend. So if you're looking to win that all expenses paid trip to the Oracle Arena, use the promo code JMNALCS at jerseymikes.com before the end of the day Sunday for your chance at a free trip to Oakland. 
Now, if you don't manage to win that sweepstakes, hit up lollysports.com slash tickets for your set so we can catch you in Oakland as we crown the 2018 Summer Champions. With the conclusion of the regular season, it's time to say a fond farewell to three teams we won't be seeing until 2019 as we welcome back R.I.P. Hey guys, I just want to say I uh, appreciated playing with all of you guys this year. No matter what happens, let's just play our hearts out till the very end. Remember people. No, I right? agree, yeah, but they like... didn't put in a good moment for Optic. They just put big memeing. They were the closest to the playoffs. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's why we can poke the most fun at Oh, yeah, I'm sure they're, they're not going <laughs> to. Now, it's important to note that Clutch isn't included in RIP because they can attend the regional qualifier. They yep. still have a chance, so we won't rip them just yet. We are going to hand it off to Pastry Azale and Zyrene to give us their thoughts on game one. But as we go, Think Card Bets, the first quarter final, is all in their hands. So I think TSM is going to play pretty slow. They might try to do something early, like level two, to try to catch us off guard. But for the most part, they're a very slow and calculated team. I think that if we just pretty much play our aggressive uh, style against TSM the way we normally do, we'll get an early advantage, and then they'll kind of just sound winning for us to mess up. So the game's on us. If we mess up, they might be able to come back. So yeah, some of the players have had mixed results in playoffs um, in their each like respective teams in the past. But now that we're all together, we've always been always been a really confident team. And just everything combined, it's obviously funny to joke about like all these different curses that exist. But we know that at the end of the day, if we play our way, we're the better team. And so we're just kind of just confident going into it. Well, we'll see if they are the better team today. But for this matchup, more than perhaps any playoff match we have this split, we, we kind of had a clash of two dramatically different styles. Yeah, and Thinkard really did touch on it quite a bit in his interview. But... Uh, Echo Fox is kind of the epitome of proactivity. They like to be extremely aggressive, whether they're behind, ahead, even doesn't matter, they're going to fight you. And TSM, on the other side of the coin, play very slowly. They have bucked that trend a little bit with Bjergsen on Assassins, but generally speaking, you know, these identities are very kind of secure within the teams, and you can see them a lot when you look at the two junglers. Grig is much more about reacting and counter ganking. Dardox always trying to get in their face and start fights. And, you know, TSM wants to wait for those fights where Echo Fox is going to try to bring it to them early and often. Yeah, and the point that Think Card had about, you know, it's kind of their game most of the time because the proactivity that Echo Fox have, mm -hmm. if you even have an advantage over them and they're under their inhibitor turret, they're the type of team that's going to fight you and make the game happen. They don't wait for it to happen. Well, one of the other break points in this quarterfinal, though, could come down to the top lane where we have two players who are once considered the best in their roles, Irene. A lot of history between Huni and Hanser. Neither of them are considered to be top dog right now in the NALCS where, like you said, they went back and forth between who's number one, who's number two a few years ago. And discussion started in Hanser's first season on TSM when he beat Huni in the playoffs. People remember the famous Lucian top lane for Huni, but they don't remember the Maokai that was against it. That was Hanser, the guy who was able to neutralize him in that first playoff. Well, the first clash between those players is coming up in not too long until game one. Back to you, Dash. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Today, the NALCS first team was announced for the 2018 summer, and they are as the follows. Reveal. First up, da -da -da! 100 Thieves someday in the top lane, followed by Team Liquid's X Smithy in the jungle. Jensen taking up the mid lane for Cloud9, double lift of Team Liquid at that bot lane carry, and Afro Moo of 100 Thieves at support. And really surprising, you see four of these guys with over 100 points, which is a, a pretty unanimous or consensus decision, I yeah. should say, which we don't always see in the voting. Yeah, if someone gets every single first place vote this year, they would have 138 points. That's good so context. Double lift Whoa. Uh, had two people vote him second and one person vote him third. Other than that, he was first place AD carry across the board. And of course, someday right up there near the top of the point totals. But let's talk about a few of these guys, starting with the Team Liquid teammates, Enix Smithy and Doublelift. First place, the end of the regular split. I mean, such a team that plays around Doublelift. Uh, he is clearly the primary focus and who all of the wins kind of come through. And then the main guy who kind of helps them get there and make sure that things stick to the game plan for Doublelift a lot of time feels like Smithy. And he does a great job controlling the early game, setting the team up for success. 
Yeah, it's been about a year and a half now since X Smithy, I think, has been seen as one of the best, if not the best, junglers in the North American LCS. He wasn't on the award voting in spring. That had to do a little bit with some team performance, but he's been so consistent, it feels like. He does find ways to run away with games, but he doesn't let it happen to him, which right. is something that is really hard to do in the jungle position, and X Smithy does it consistently. Without a doubt, a top performer. Sometimes not so flashy, and maybe that's why he's yep. overlooked, but still a top performer. Next up, 100 Thieves, Someday in the top lane, and Afro Mood down at support, both getting first team honors. Yeah, and uh, Someday uh, has been an absolute beast up in the top side of the map. There's been a little bit between him and Licorice, but a lot of the time when you just do the eyeball check, it feels like Someday yeah. is unbelievably good. I think top lane was the most competitive role for first place, and you see that when you get all the way down to third team with how few points those guys had, because right. literally everyone had uh, Someday and Licorice one and two, and then Afro Moo, it's really hard to overlook his contributions. He was the spring split MVP, and it's not like 100 Thieves had this massive fall off in the summer split. So he contributes in so many different ways to that team. It's no surprise to see him again on the first team. And then, of course, right there, smack dab in the middle, is Jensen of Cloud9 playing 13 of the 18 games for the team this split and still snagging first team. Yeah, it's definitely been a roller coaster ride for C9. He's been on a little bit of the downward part, but then shot back up with the rest of the team as well holds a lot of the leads and the uh, stats for the mid laners and also has the highest win percentage. So despite some of the losses early in the season, still has more uh, higher win rate than everyone else. Exactly, was benched at the start of the season, changed his solo queue account to a new beginning, really uh -huh. brought his game back up to a high level, playing a bunch with Blabber as well in Academy, but got enough LCS stage time the zillion games, I think, stand out in everyone's mind is really something that separated him from the rest of the pack, and he deserves that number one spot. Yeah, refresh that mindset, and he came back in and started smashing. Let's move along to the second team, and here we will find Power of Evil smack dab in the mid lane. I think that's a big one we should talk about. Uh, again, as this is one of the teams that didn't qualify for the playoffs, yeah. and yet he finds himself on second team. He's actually the only player on first, second, or third team that didn't make playoffs, but we also have to remember, if Optic wins a single more game, they could have finished as high as third. Right. So they're very, very close to playoffs, and Power of Evil was such a huge part of their success. He had the majority of their damage with the majority of their resources, but he was usually putting it to extremely good use. And personally, I had him first uh, in the mid lane. So wow. I think he definitely deserves second. Yeah, I think he was first for a lot of people until the late season surge by yeah. all of the C9 guys, which is why you also see the rest of them kind of populating that uh, second team. Right, you've got Licorice, Sneaky, and Zazel all on second team to yeah. follow Jensen on the first team. So uh, again, no surprise with the dominance they had on the second half mm -hmm. of the split that they kind of sneak in there, almost occupying all of the top spots due to recency. Yeah, you also have to note that Dardock here as the Echo Fox jungler, a lot of Echo Fox players noticeably absent mm -hmm. from this list. Mooney's not in the top three teams. He's for, for a team that's the number four seed in playoffs being the only player on that list. And is that's because they had a somewhat opposite trajectory, so. right? The expectations the were higher on the first half, the trades, and of course, some things falling apart near the late part of the season. If we look at the third team, though, we have our first ever tie up in the top lane. Flame and Impact both sharing the same number of points, so it's a six-man roster. Right, and this is what, to Jazz's <laughs> point about how there's consensus, licorice, and someday battling for the top two, and then after that, Impact is a much better uh, tank and team player that plays around double lift. Flame is a lot more independent, plays more carries, and then there's also Hooney, who didn't even manage to get tire them, but was also pretty close. Mm -hmm. All of them kind of battling for that third spot. Yeah, and I'm really glad to see Santorin getting some recognition. It looked a lot like a lateral move for FlyQuest in the offseason when they brought him in as their starting jungler, but he ended up having a large part in the FlyQuest resurgence as they find themselves in the playoffs. Yeah, we find a couple of TSM players there, Bjergsen and uh, Sven. I know a lot yep. of people looking at ADC position could argue that Sven was kind of the rock for TSM through a large portion of the split. Yeah, he, he was playing pretty well the entire time. Not the most aggressive player, so when they're losing, sometimes it's hard to notice him playing well. Mm -hmm. um, there was a fair amount of losing for TSM this split, but they did turn things around well enough uh, and that's why he's still on this roster. But yeah, what about players who didn't make the top three? Is there anyone, yeah. you know, that was right on that cusp who maybe was forgotten? Absolutely. I mean, I have my own personal list of snubs who are people that showed up on my ballot but didn't end up making it into the top three teams because right, of other me. voting. So I think Big, Wild Turtle, and Blabber are all Big the agree. teams. Big agree. Big was a massive implication for this Optic team in terms of shock calling. Everyone talked about how great he was. I think Wild Turtle as well, 
had very good performances for FlyQuest. So many of their wins came through their bottom lane. And Blabber. And there's a big argument for and against Blabber in the fact that he literally only played half the games. He only played nine games, and a lot of people credit his success to Jensen. Right. But he brings a completely new dynamic to that Cloud9 team, and he was actually the straw it's a reverse analogy straw that broke the camel's back straw that built the, the back was like back. the losing streak <laughs> yeah the straw that built sure. the camel why because not because as soon as he came in cloud nine took off absolutely okay i got one quick question for you and the answer might seem obvious but i thought it was kind of a fun thought exercise between the first team and the second team who would win in a game of league of legends I think obviously a lot of people would jump to first team, but to me, they actually look very competitive mm -hmm. as teams, as full rosters. I'm going to say first team. You are going to go with yeah. the first team, of course. Yeah. Do you yeah. agree there, they, Mark? They got double lift Aphromoo they, with X Smithy. Oh, there's already there's the built jungle. in synergy already. They've second, all played with each other. Yeah. Second team concerns just with POE and Licorice, both for the most part being pretty resource intensive. That's true. Yeah. But you got the duo bot lane of Sneaky and they Faisal have more synergy. already they have there. Yeah. Oh, and know. they're used to subbing out their jungle in mid laner. So they should. They're, they're playing it. They're playing at home in that case. All right. Well, it's time for us to take a break. When we return, I spoil the NALCS playoff script, and FlyQuest Academy Medios will be joining us to take a closer look at the first quarterfinal match. As we go to break, though, here's a taste of the newest episode of Eyes On, which follows Echo Fox's jungler, Dardock. They don't know anybody like me. I was an anomaly in esports when I came in, and. My personality rubbed a lot of people the wrong way. A lot of people want to see me lose. On top of it, I didn't know how to handle losing, so it was just a double whammy. Pretty shocking news two weeks ago when Dardock was suspended. He's suspended by Team Liquid. Now it's Amoto's recent jungle acquisition, Dardock. Question is, can he excel on this new roster? He's a great player. It just shows he doesn't have the level of maturity. CLG, Immortal, swapping at Smithy and Dardock. He hasn't found the right team yet. Dardock to TL. My first response was, what the fuck? You don't keep getting chances. Eventually, no one will pick him up. Can you get something good out of this player is one of the biggest questions. 